Hey, I'm Gaur and welcome back to the beginner's guide on DCTL development. So last time we took our lift gamma gain and offset DCTL and added some user parameters so you can change how much of each is being applied during use. And we also took the maps of each function and turned them into separate functions to reuse later on. In this video, we will add a grayscale ramp to the bottom of the image so you can actually see what the tool is doing. And in addition to just seeing it on screen, you can also very nicely see the curve inside your scopes. So if you did your homework, then instead of all the maps being down here, you should just have four nice float free functions and all of the maps is hidden up here inside of the functions. And this time, let's work on implementing a grayscale ramp at the bottom of the screen, which also reflects any and everything that we do to the rest of the image. So to create a grayscale ramp, we have to know where the pixel is located horizontally, which we have provided as the X coordinate. And then based on that, we want to set the color of the pixel on the grayscale, meaning that each of the channel's values should be equal. Finally, we also want to check if the pixel is at the bottom of the screen. For this, we'll use the Y coordinate. So let's make some room down below and start coding up our grayscale ramp. Let's set out to a new float free. And inside, let's take the X coordinate three times. Save it, head over to DaVinci Resolve, hit reload, and we get a white image. Very peculiar. Actually, what's happening is to be expected, because the X and Y coordinates are in pixels, meaning that the values start from one and only go up, while what we need is values between zero and one. So to achieve this, let's divide the X coordinate by the width, which is also in pixels. Let's do this three times, hit save, and see what happens now. The image is black. This is due to the fact that all of these variables are integers, while what we need is floats. As such, if you perform maths on these variables directly, the result will also be an integer, meaning that the closest value will either be zero or one, not something in between. Now to fix this, we'll have to create new variables and do what is called casting. So essentially we'll turn them into floats before working with them. Let's make a new float called width and set it equal to P width, but let's cast it as a float. And let's do the same for an X coordinate and again, cast it as a float. And while we're at it, we can actually do the calculation already. And let's call this relative X, which will be X divided by width. Now, instead of these integers, we can use the ready-made Rx and if we head over to DaVinci Resolve and hit reload, we have achieved a beautiful grayscale ramp. The problem is that if we start changing our UI parameters, we don't see any change in the ramp. This is because our ramp is rendered after applying these changes. To fix this, let's simply take the ramp and move it above the lift gamma gain and offset. Hit save, hit reload, and what do you know, it works beautifully. The only thing we're missing now is limiting it to the bottom of the screen. For this, let's, in addition to our width and x coordinates, add a height a y coordinate 
and a relative y coordinate. Of course, you could do this with the pixel values, but I like to make my tools resolution independent. So whether you're working on a 480p or an 8K resolution, the ramp is always relatively the same height. And to now achieve this, we want to use a conditional, or as it's known in programming languages, an if statement. Which looks something like this. You have the keyword if, then you have parentheses inside of which you give a conditional. And if that conditional is true, any code inside of these curly brackets will be executed. For the conditional, let's have ry is smaller than 0.2f. And if that is true, let's take this piece of code and run it. If I hit save, reload to DCTL, and what do you know? We have limited where the grayscale ramp resides. Unfortunately, it's on the top half of the screen, not the bottom, so not quite where I expected. To fix this, let's flip the arrow and also flip the number. Hit save, reload, and voila, it's at the bottom of the screen. So it's still a bit too thick for my liking. So I'll set it to 0.95. Reload, and perfect. We have a grayscale ramp, which is also affected by whatever we do in the DC tell, and it provides a nice curve we can see in our waveform scope to see what our tool is doing exactly. Finally, let's implement a checkbox to turn the grayscale ramp on and off. For this, we first have to add the checkbox itself. This we can find from the readme file. We can copy that to the bottom, add a variable name, a label and a default value of either 0 or 1, that being off or on. And then we can use the pramp variable and create another conditional to wrap all of the grayscale ramp code. So if the p underscore ramp variable is equal to 1, then Let's run all of this code and its convention to indent it by a level. Now, if I save and head over to resolve, reload, and poof, the ramp is gone, unless I hit the checkbox. And as a pro tip in if statements, if you're testing for a checkbox, you can leave out the equals equals one and it will still work. Well, there you go. Now you know what the x, y width and height parameters do in the main function. You know how to limit any operation to only a part of the screen. And you know how to add a checkbox to toggle it on and off. See you next time.